Let me go ahead and share a screen here. This woman right here. This <laughs> woman. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite artists on the planet. She is awesome. She's got a fantastic voice. She is so talented. And uh, I just, I just can't. Um, I, I love having her on the show. She's always so much fun. And so uh, with everybody, please give a warm, warm welcome to the one, the only Tamar's in the house. Actually, you know what? I'm a member of Hi. This Woo! Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> We're yeah, we got make, city. Yeah, we got to we got to make you big. We can't make you big. Why can't I make you big? Hold on a second. Uh, yeah, we can. I know we can. There we go. Now we can do it. There you go. Oh, my hair is like there in is. my face. Hi. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yes. Excuse how yeah, I gonna... look. I mean, literally it's been a long day. It's like one of those days today. <laughs> Meetings back to back. I said, you know, everything. I talked to my agent. I was like, listen, make all the meetings on one day so I can just look presentable on one day. Because, you know, COVID <laughs> has allowed me to look a hot mess. And I think that's like, you know, I forgot how to wear heels. I had to do something yesterday and I was like, Ugh, what is this? <laughs> so, I don't know how anybody wears heels. I've seen... I don't know how you go up the stairs. I, I've watched women go upstairs in heels, and I'm 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 a, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. And every woman is above me because of that. <laughs> yeah, when, when Rob wears heels, he struggles every way he walks. I'm every time you. I put on heels, I struggle. <laughs> and I literally like I was late because I had I have to get ready to go to San Diego, and I've not eaten. I needed to get my nails done, and I needed to eat. I haven't eaten yet, so I had to make a smoothie. And this is the like the worst that I've ever made it. And I'm looking at it like. Please look, my own fun. <laughs> I know. Where's the sound effects when you need oh, them? Oh, yeah, that's right. I got. I, I have sound that's effects. That's what we got Jeff for. <laughs> <laughs> You're Somebody. doing good. You're right on time. All yeah. I'm missing is up. Boom, boom. That's how we're missing. I even got. <laughs> ah. That's oh. for you. <laughs> <laughs> And I gotta have you know what I gotta do is I have to move all of these around so that I can um so I can hit the ones so that they're readily available because there's some here that I'm never going to use. Like punch. I'm never gonna use punch. <laughs> I'm never gonna use that. Oh, oh. <laughs> Bugle, I mean, if someone was talking about something and it was just like, man, and so they got into a fight and then you'd be like, punch. Well, right? Use it. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or you use a Bruce Lee sound. What the uh, oh, oh, that would be a good oh. one. Oh. <laughs> Oh. There you go. <laughs> hey, I'll do it. I'll do some sound bites for you. Okay. Well, nice. There you go. We, we, we can actually, we can actually, uh, here, what kind of smoothie is that? That's what I want to ask you first. Cause have you ever had this stuff right here? This is, this stuff is called Organifi. Have you ever, have you ever had this before? It's called green. Oh, no, that looks, that looks like something I would get into. Yeah, but yours is homemade. No, that's not yeah. the same. Now, you did that yourself. That's yeah. a whole different thing. I still thing. have it in the blender. Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> that's just efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> it was still in a so, pack. You poured it in the blender and fake it. <laughs> right. So let me tell you how I came across my my whole um my concoction. So I was during COVID, I you know, like of course a, a lot of us started working out like really strong. Cause that's all you can really do is really go outside. And so I went to Smoothie King and I felt like over time it just kept tasting different. So one day I was like, let me walk inside and get the smoothie. And she was pumping the coconut water out of like those like a uh, snow cone kind of thing. And it looked old <laughs> and I, it's just something about her pumping it out of there that just made me go. And I never, right, there's a sound. And I was like, I'm never going back. So I said, I've got to figure out how to make a, a smoothie at home that will taste good. Because every time I've made them in the past, they always tasted too bitter or too this. So I finally found out, I just like my liquid base to be water. So right. now I just do, and I always, it ha and now I see why they, all the cooking shows are measuring things. I'm like, why did they measure? Just put the daggone salt in there and see if it's too salty, right? Like, that's me. And so I, I don't measure anything. I just be like, oh, this looks right. This looks right. Let me taste it. Okay, it needs more of this, whatever. So long story short, I was like, okay. So I started doing eight ounces of water, 
half a banana because I'd read somewhere that if you do eat bananas still because it's so much sugar in it just to eat half of it. So I cut, I froze half, uh, I, I, I get bananas and I cut them up and I store them. And so I did half a banana. I found from Trader Joe's frozen ginger cubes, like real ginger, but it's frozen. And not too many people know about it. There you go. So I, I put one cube of ginger. I use agave, cinnamon, bear, all the berries basically. And I use, that's it. And I, for some reason, it's like, I was drinking it for the first time, like, where have I been? And so to this day, I don't buy any smoothies out. I, I live and breathe by this. And sometimes I'll throw in a pineapple or a mango, but this one is strictly berries. Yeah. So, and this one that I was showing to you was uh, green juice, which is just basically got all the stuff that um, it's got probiotics in it and got um, ashwagandha and all kinds of superfoods. And it's all in this little packet and you basically add it to water and choke it down. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta send me that one. Hey everyone, I, I feel bad. Yes, hey guys. Yes, hey it's Naysha, 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 in the Naysha, house. Hey, I don't... hey Ling. Hey Susie. <laughs> How are you fine, folks? And I, I was just I, I see that there is a call that is that is in here, and I don't know if this person is. Uh, hopefully, it's it's a call to talk to you, Tamar. But we'll we'll go ahead and get them on the line and see uh, see if they're there. I, see me. I can't get my hair right either. I'm in like listen. I cannot get my. I cut it all <laughs> off, and I just. Today, for some reason, I just, I'm just looking like, what is happening? Hello? Oh. Hey, caller, who, who are, how's it going? It's uh, good. Can you hear me, though? I, I'm not sure if you're talking uh, to me. Yeah, we can, we can hear you. What you got? Uh, okay, this is R.D. Hall. I've got a question for Tamar. Oh, great. Okay, this, we're, 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 let's just go right into it. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. You're in. Hey, Ma, I know this is going to seem kind of like rare and kind of like so far away, but back in like uh, the 2000s, you did um, a, 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 a concert at the Viper Room in Los Angeles with Prince, and you guys did a tune called Stay With Me that was from you know, covered by Bette Midler in The Rose. Can you tell me why you guys did that song? at that time it's funny uh, it's a full circle that's really janice joplin um, and prince loved janice joplin he loved janice joplin and he used to always try to this is a story no one knows he used to always throw songs at me and he would think that because i was young that i wouldn't know them so one day he said you know there's this tune i want to do um stay with me and i was like stay with me baby and he looked at me like how do you know that song? I was like, it's Janis Joplin. She's from Texas. How, how could I not know my history? And he was floored. And that became, outside of Never Loved a Man, that was like his favorite song. No, I take that back. Love, Love Changes was one of his favorite too. All the songs that were in that tour was his favorite. But I think Stay With Me Baby was his favorite song. And and not too many people ever re-sing it, you know what I mean? And And sing it live. So that's how it came about. He, he, he challenged me again, as he always did, and I knew the song. And, and it's funny, because A Night with Janis Joplin, the show I did on Broadway, when that song played, it was very emotional for me, because I was like, mm -hmm. wow, Prince, you know, he's one of those rare musicians who knows a plethora of music, and that was one of the songs. So yeah, yeah. great Absolutely. question. Yeah, and I I had to I had to mute you, caller, because I guess you had a speaker coming on, so it was like feeding back. But uh, if you're still there, any any of the questions that you have? Are you good? Okay, I, I hope I hope you got your answer that you needed. If you anybody else wants to call in, absolutely positively call in. Uh, the number is scrolling on the bottom. It's two six two three We Funk. That's twenty six twenty three We Funk, and you can also dial two six two three nine three three eight six five to call in to ask questions of Tamar or to talk to Tamar. Uh, so listen, I can, gotta, I, can I can I jump in real quick because I wanted to ask yeah. since we're already on the subject. Uh, that uh, that show that you did, the Broadway show uh, about Janis Joplin, um, you played um, uh, Aretha Franklin, Nina Simone. Who else did you play? Is that it? Uh, I I sang. Um, I sang. Uh, okay. I sang "Summertime," so I was considered a blues singer. But I sang okay. "Summertime," the operatic version from Porgy and Bess. Oh wow! 
And that came out like, like you did that how many years ago? So we originally set the show for the hundred celebration of celebration of love in San Francisco. Of course, I didn't know what that was. I was like, what is celebration of love? Then I saw all these people coming as if they were at Woodstock and I was like, what is happening? It was a sold out house every single night. They had to extend the show. So finally I did some research on celebration of love and I was like, Oh my God, these people like literally lived and breathed Janis Joplin. So first the show picked up on 2017. Then we went out on tour at the end of 2017. Then the show got picked up by Broadway HD. So it basically streams 24 seven on the Broadway version of live, um, live streaming. So it's the Netflix of Broadway. So if you do not, know about broadwayhd.com in like the broadway shows that you probably wish you could have seen they filmed them hd which was oh. so crazy just to see those cameras everywhere and then it got picked up in movie theaters so it was in movie theaters for about a month in 2019 wow. and then it just made its japan debut july 2nd so it it's was new. in cinemas everywhere in japan that's so cool that's the third. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I, I found the sound effects you were looking for earlier, but uh, now it's not appropriate. Sue <laughs> 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 uh, said, how did she meet me? But then she followed it up with, how did she meet Prince? But uh, I, I'll, I'll take the story of how, how I met Tamar. I met Tamar in Atlanta at a Prince show, and then we met. We've met multiple times. We met at your again at your Atlanta show at uh, the City Winery, City Winery in Atlanta. And we hung out in, in Atlanta for a while, and then we hung out again in Minneapolis when I I did the introduction for NPG uh, in Minneapolis when NPG when you were sitting with NPG. So we, you and I got to hang out quite a bit. It's always fun to to watch you do your thing because you just. You're such an amazing vocalist, and I just can't. Um, it's just like I, I'm going to tell you right now. I love this new album. My name is Ashley. Oh, yeah. And, and oh. let me just say before Please. before we get into talking about my name is Ashley, uh, I also want to talk about I Am the Storm, which is just mm. I mean that friggin' album. I just don't understand the why that just wasn't all over the radio especially songs like fleek and we we took a lot of those songs that were off of that and put it on regular rotation and people always ask me who does that song it's like stay uh and it's just I, I just um how do you feel about the traction that your music gets do you feel like you're kind of really you know uh, fighting against some kind of unforeseen power that seems to be like holding you back because in my opinion and i think everybody here that is listening to you i mean you should be enormous right now and it just doesn't make any sense beast mode yeah you know it's funny <clears throat> you, you know you work with the greatest of all time and you sit in on every kind of hangout meeting whatever you name it and everything that he said that would happen is happening so i'm not shocked anymore i I'm really enjoying creating music now more than ever, not for anything but outside of giving good content. Cause I feel like somewhere there'll be a miraculous story about one of the songs doing something and making its light at some point. I mean, it's like an aloe black thing. You know, his story is on my website with the town hall meeting, how he wrote one song. He got laid off corporate wise. He was laid off for X amount of time. His song landed on a, a compilation, ended up hitting somewhere in the UK, got on a McDonald's commercial. That song is like the song that ended up over here. And, you know, it's like one of the number one synced songs of our generation. So the point I'm trying to make with that is that I do feel deep down inside now with what I know in the business and moving behind the camera and behind the scenes into the executive stuff, what really goes on. And the sad thing is I don't think a lot of people understand the machine is the label. And sometimes that's an advantage and sometimes it's not. And as an independent artist, I don't think people really understand what really helps our music. And it's when people like the music, it's when they share mm -hmm. the music, it's mm -hmm. when they add it to a playlist. It's when you guys become the drivers. And so this project, I actually had a sponsor to help me underwrite a lot of the costs. And a lot of people understand just to make 
a sonically well-produced record ca cost you minimally 30000 That's just to make the record and get the musicians you want, the recording, the mastering, the artwork, the photographer. And thank God I've worked with some of the best people. So they have all came in and said, listen, instead of me doing it for this amount, I'll do it for this amount. So I was able to budget way more this time. But to answer your question, like sometimes I used to feel like, dang, is there some forces against me to get this music out? Right. But I really feel like at some point it's going to find its light of the day. Cause, and, and when you learn from a timeless writer, you can't help but write timeless music. And to me, that's right. what I know I have. So I am putting more into the project. I'm, you know, going out with Stuart Copeland and able to do pop-up yep. meet and greets. And I'm a, I have more announcements for my own shows where I'll have my entire band on stage, brass and everything. So eventually you'll see those kind of shows pop up and we still have, you know, things in the can. There's videos I did already for some of the songs. So you're getting ready to see those. Um, nice. But it is, it's a lot of work. I, I mean, after this project, I don't know when I'm going to do another full album because it's after a while, you're just like, this is a lot of work. And, and, and I don't think people understand it really takes a team, but you still have to pay that team. You know, a publicist is X amount of dollars a month. You know, a social media person is X amount of dollars a month. You know, I don't edit everything, but the things you see, I've been learning how to edit. You know, um, I finally got a 5K camera and about to start learning how to do more visuals with better backdrops. And, you know, it, outsourcing is a big thing for independent artists and having a budget for that. Like you got to live or you're going to put all of it into that. And I'm at a stage in my career where that is not what pays the bills. And, you know, that's the reality of it. And I, I really I really want a lot of people to understand how it really works for independent artists. Yeah. And 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 I appreciate you you kind of dealing with that, because I know you, know you and I talked a lot when you were in Atlanta. We were talking about because there was so much music that um, a lot of people didn't know. And you actually revealed a secret to me about Prince. Um, you had told me that it's not a secret now because we talked about it on the air last time you were on was that Prince had actually had his hand in writing a lot of the music on um on, on some of your stuff and you he actually signed over the rights to all that music to you and so it's just shocking to me that there's like so much of the music that you you've been releasing over the years prince actually had his hand on and it, that traction still wasn't able to spin the wheels. But I think, you know, some of the people didn't know that, but I think it maybe if it was maybe marketed that way, it may have been, uh, may have been received differently. But I also kind of respect the fact, I respect the hustle and the fact that you didn't use that as your marketing tool. You, you based right. it, you based it on your talent and your, you know, your capabilities, which is just, I mean, yeah, that's, you know. Yeah, it it's funny. Um, that that was part of my my prayer. You know, I was like, God, I know I'm more than just Prince or Tyler Perry. And it's cool because people make the association, and I totally get it from a marketing standpoint. But I knew at the end of the day, I can't be known as just like the girl that sang with Prince or the girl from The Voice. And so this right. album was that first time where I said, you know, my visuals. I want people to really see me. I want people to see my creative aspect. Even Prince kind of prophesied in front of the original 3121 home. He was like, one day you're going to produce. And I was like, produce? What is that? He was like, you're going to produce. You're going to do productions. You're going to put on, you know, creative content. And I said, nah. I was like, mm, I don't know how I'm going to do that. And here it is. I'm, I'm really doing it. And it's freeing. But at the same time, it's a lot of work. It's a it's lot of work. A lot of work. Yeah, we got another caller here. Let's see. Uh, let's get this person on the line. Caller, you're on the line with Tamar. What you got? Ooh, my hair. Hello. <laughs> Did you drop off? Uh, it's okay. We got. Uh, let me get. There's somebody else that called him. Hey, caller, you're on the line with Tamar. Who's calling? Hi, it's Maylene. Hi, Tamar. Hey, Hi, Maylene. How are you? <laughs> Tamar, you are enough, girl. You are bad. And Prince saw that in you. And don't let anybody dim your light. I love your music. You. I love your story. You know, we were MySpace friends way back in the day. You must have been <laughs> oh. cool, girl. <laughs> yes, MySpace. Welcome to MySpace. Uh, I just had a meeting and uh, we were I talking about that. I was going over MySpace not too long ago because somebody told me there was some stuff in there I needed to look at. And she was my friend. I'm like, what? Anyway, tell crazy. them the story. 
story about how you got connected to Prince because our mutual friend told me about that. Uh, okay. The, the, you the did short- it. I'm going to get that album. Oh, uh, thank you so That's much. That's all I have to say. Bye. Oh, bye. <laughs> I can't hear her. I can't hear her at all. Oh, okay. You don't have her connected to the phone? Uh, no, she can. We can hear you. So we'll just go ahead and drive off, and then you can listen. Okay. We'll take a listen. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. Bye bye. All right. All right. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Yeah, I mean, it. it the the. Sh- oh, it's such a long story. The short end of it was, I was flown to Paisley when I was fourteen. Um, I remember I was at high school, and my mom was like, "Hey, you, uh, you know, Prince wants you to come to Minneapolis." And how I got there was because my cousin played my demo for Morris Hayes. So he's always going to be a part of my life. And um, I was flown to Minneapolis. I didn't meet Prince at the time. I remember recording in the studio. I remember, I think it was in studio B or C, the one that was the furthest away from A and B, I think. And um, and I remember seeing like the vault. I remember seeing the Purple Rain bike. And at the, you guys, so let me give y'all a confession. I didn't see Purple Rain until 2016. Do not shoot me. Do wow. not shoot me. Wow. Do not shoot me. <laughs> Do not shoot me. Okay. So, um, so yes. Yeah, so just mind you, I'm looking at all this stuff like, okay, there's a bike. You know, I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> and so, I mean, I'm like 12 years old. I don't, I don't know anything. And so, um, I just remember I got a gift bag and had the most beautiful. It was like this exclusive content album, whatever. And so I did a photo shoot with his team. And I remember going to dinner and papers were going across and my mom was looking at the papers and that's, that's what happened with that. I don't know what happened. And then in 2004, I started touring with Tamia. I was singing background for Tamia and the famed choreographer for Tima Robinson was the choreographer. And from there, she and I stayed in contact and she kept encouraging me. She saw something in me, I guess. And she just was like, just speaking life into me. And then, um, 2005 came around, she invited me to a video shoot. It was all these dancers from Rio who dances with Usher to Gilbert who dances with Christina Aguilera. It was like all these dancers. I'm like, what is happening? We were in the pool house. It was like two in the morning, it's dark. We're all just sitting there like, what are we doing? What are we doing here? And then we get invited into the ma- the main house, the original 3021, 3121. Of course, I didn't know I would eventually be back here. And from there, it was a video shoot and he kind of walks behind the couch. It's like very smoky and they're like action. And this guy, you know, I could feel something walk behind me and I remember getting chills. And then literally we're in there for 15 minutes and the director's like, all right, cut, that's a wrap. And we're all like, that's a wrap, we just came in here. And so the lights come on, the smoke is kind of leaving and there's Prince. And I was like, oh my God, there's, there's, there's Prince. So then I look for Fatima before I leave and she's in the kitchen and She's like, yeah, the real reason why I brought you here is because I want you to sing for Prince. And in my mind, I was like, oh, my God, this would be amazing. But it didn't happen. And as fate would have it, as you would say, two days later, they had invited all of us extras to come back to the house for an after party for the People's Choice Awards. And you guys, when I tell you I'm leaving out so many details that will make you be like, what? Huh? You know, it's all in the book. Let me just say that. So. Um, I went back, literally cutting out some details that are very integral to the story to make it be like, oh my God, this had to be divine. So I go back to the house, go to the after party, walk in the house. There's Cora on drums. I've known Cora from Houston and her husband was on bass. Sheila E. No. And then I think Frank McComb was on keys. I went to the bathroom, came back. Sheila E. was on drums. And so I'm really at this moment, like, what is happening right now? She, I'm looking at Sheila E on drums. What is happening? And then to my right at, at the time, the pool room, the, like the game room was to the right. So Prince was in the pool room and Takumi was in there. I think some p- pictures are floating around. I think I have it in my phone of them in that room. And so anyways, it's like wee hours in the morning. We're about to leave. And my friend is like, um, I don't want to leave without saying thank you for opening your home. I was like, well, I'm not saying anything. You should say something. And Prince was at the stairs because when you walked in the house, there was two, there was stairs that would go to the right and to the left. So he was on the left side of the, the stairs on the left. So as we were walking out, my friend is like, hey, my name's Byron. He's introducing himself, blah, 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 blah. And I was, and he looked so cordial and so welcoming. So I was like, well, maybe I'll say something. And I was like, hi, Prince. Thank you for opening your home. My name is Ashley. And it just came out. You wrote a song for me at 14, or 12 years old. And he looked at me and he was like, he looked like, huh? And I was like, yeah. And I, I just immediately just started talking. I was like, yeah, you you wrote a rendition of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And and he looked like, oh. And then he was like, oh. 
he was like, wait, what's your name again? And I told him and he said, where, you know, have you been? Where have you been? And at the time I was working with Lee Rittenauer. So musician to musician, you know, of course he, uh, you know, idolizes Lee Rittenauer. So I'm telling him I'm working with Lee Rittenauer. And he was like, wait, how old are you? And I'm telling him and he was like, well, what, what else have you been up to? And I'm like, oh, you know, college, blah, blah, blah. And so fate would have it. I'm in the studio that night till the sun comes up and he's talking life into me. And he brings, uh, we do a shedding session. It's just me. He plays a drum loop. My friend Byron played keys. And we literally had a shedding moment, just the three of us for about 45 minutes. And I, I mean, mm. I can go on and on and on, but that's that's how it started. I mean, it's so many details, you guys. It's, it's just, it's, <laughs> yeah, I would be here all night, so. That's crazy. And you're welcome to be here all night. <laughs> right? <laughs> I can't. I have a flight tomorrow and I have to like. I know, I know, I know. Over a but book of sheet music. <laughs> a, a lot of people don't know this about you, but you were originally in Destiny's Child group Girls Time at the time. And um, so a lot of people don't know that. So if you want to could briefly share that story and how that came to be, because a lot of people aren't aware of that, because I'm seeing people responding going, Destiny's Child? Uh, yeah, I'll, and I'll just let you tell the story on that. Yeah, it's so funny. You know, I, that's not a part of my life that I ever wanted to ignore. It's just a part of my life that brings up, um, and it's in the book, and, and uh, you know, I was in the group at such a young age. We were typical girls. It originally was like 12, 13 of us, and then they brought us down to six of us. We were called Girls Time. That's a whole story of how it happened. We're all from Houston, so of course that's the common denominator. Um, and um, and honestly, my parents took me out because there was so much so much conflict of interest behind the scenes. And 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 it wasn't until I went on The Voice that people I did Star Search. I mean, that was my first time on flights, recording in studios. I mean, it was a big moment for me. It wasn't when I knew I wanted to do it professionally at all. It was just a lot of behind the scenes that just was really crazy to the point where I didn't really know what had happened until maybe 2010 when my mom sat me down and talked to me. And that's a whole story of how powerful that moment was with my mom. Um, because at the time, I didn't know why it was so much friction between us. And she kind of felt like she had made a wrong decision. And then I guess I was harboring bitterness for taking me out. Um, and so the book is really about redemption and, and restoration and forgiveness and how God just continues to illuminate my path. And, and it's not this this life is not what I prayed for. You know what I mean? And so um, and so, yeah, I, I ended up getting out of the group. And I, it wasn't until this year that I found out what really happened. It's on my podcast featuring uh, David Brewer, who was our vocal coach. So if you guys listen to that, I'm telling you, grab some tissue because that was just talking about is emotional. Like I didn't know what was going on. And a lot of parents, you know, they make decisions to protect their children. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was a hard pill to swallow even this year to hear what really happened. Um, and uh, a lot of it had to do with colorism. And, and you know, and at that age, you don't know what that stuff is. You know, songs were stripped from me at times. It was just a weird moment. But me and the girls are cool. Uh, Beyonce and I ran into each other at the Grammys. Um, we performed in New York and Jay-Z was there and Beyonce was there. Wow. I saw Beyonce on the, the Verizon First Ladies tour. I ran into Kelly at a G Gidena, um listening party. And she's just, she's just, I don't want to say she's my favorite, but she's, she's just a sweetheart. She really is. And then Latoya and I run into each other all the time because I knew Latoya way before the group like slumber parties and my brother had a crush on her. Like we're like childhood, childhood <laughs> friends. And uh, Latavia and I, I, I went to her baby shower and I'm gonna tell you guys a story no one knows, but we surprised her. And my mom walks in the door and Latavia's mom just cries. She just bawls. Wow. I think the whole baby shower, she just bawls. And um, it's a lot in the book and it's not a telltale all, it's just what happened, you know? And it's kind of like Tina Turner is just like, you know, after she wrote a book, she was like, she didn't want to hear about Ike. You know what I mean? It's not that I don't want to hear about it because it's a powerful story for me to, to give as a testimony to others about the power of redemption. And so that's what it is. And, and it, it, it tells my parents even have a chapter that I refuse to read because it's, it's looking back, it, you know, I hated that my parents had to make those decisions, but they did. Now, the book you're referring to is 100 Things to Know as an Independent Music Artist. No, that, that, that's that an artist? educational what, what, book. Which no, book no, no. Which book are you referring to? I, I can't so even... I, 
I wrote a memoir that I I'm still trying to figure out when I want to put it out. You know. Um, okay. I yeah. was like, Tamar, <laughs> we, we talk we talk a lot, and I'm just like this. I, I don't living. know anything about this book. <laughs> and, and I was, I was like, like this okay, book, where is it? <laughs> where is this book? Yeah, I'm like so cyber stuck, and you yeah. feeling all like weird about it. <laughs> right. Can't and, find and, this book. Yeah, and, and yeah, because the whole time I'm thinking I'm not a good friend. Um, <laughs> but I have to ask you, just um, what do you prefer to call yourself these days? Because we, we know that sometimes there is confusion between uh, whenever I, I mentioned Tamar, they're like, oh, Tamar Braxton? I love it. It's like, no, stop, time out. <laughs> but your first album was named, was, was My Name is Tamar. Uh, your newest album is My Name is Ashley. You have two Spotify accounts, one under Ashley Tamar and then the one with your artist name as Tamar Davis, which, by the way, is the one that has the album name My Name is Ashley under it. So to, to, and I, I see that you've you've chosen Tamar Davis on here. So I'm trying to is I mean, I'm mean, sorry, Ashley, Ashley Tamar, which do you prefer? Because I, I, I want to be I, again, I want to be a good friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, it's not a problem. It's slowly migrating back to Ashley Tamar and. Uh, Tamar was because Prince wanted to use Tamar, and at the time yeah. he was just like, the at, it was a lot of Ashleys coming out at the time. He was like, they can't mm. sing, you know, we don't want to associate you with non singers. <laughs> like he literally said that, and yeah. so he was like, what's your, you know, he was like, what's your full name? And I was like, Ashley Tamar Davis. So he wanted to use Tamar. There's a whole other story about that and talking with Tamar's people. And actually, Tamar Braxton brought me up like a couple of years ago on the reel, the whole story. So like they all line up, ironically. And um, that's a whole nother story. And so as I was gearing to celebrate the 10 years from My Name is Tamar, I was like, well, I should call this one My Name is Ashley because I'm composing on here. And I played love, I played piano on Love Speaks. Well, lovely is the day. No, Love Speaks. Yeah, yeah. And so I just wanted it to be, I wanted, I'm starting to rebrand it with Ashley Tamar. So my website is ashleytamar.com and and Spotify is slowly switching it over. So it's combining where it's going to say Ashley Tamar because Tamar Davis is verified. So it's a lot of little ropes to go through and send your yeah. ID and all that stuff. So <laughs> it's slowly, that. everything is just going to say Ashley Tamar. That's awesome. And so is that, is that part of why there's, um, you reworked some songs um, for, okay. All right. So it's kind of to make that connection back to that original album because yeah. I, there's like three, three, or, three or four songs. I think there's three songs. That you have on there that you kind of yeah. reworked, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, I like I like what you did with the, with the new uh, with the new reworking. It, it's it it really. Um, I mean, the originals were really good, but the, you, there's a little something special with uh, some of the changes you made, and I really like it. So thank you. Yeah, I really wanted to put. Um, thanks, Susie. I really wanted to. Um, and and what I'm doing now with music supervision and all that stuff, you know, I, I'm really understanding my purpose more and more and more now, and I. I feel like there's such a voice, you know how they're saying in TV and film, they want more representation or more right. this or more that. I feel like from the independent artists and composition side, there's a, a slew of people that have been wondering how to get in and how to do that. And I feel like now I'm able to be that catalyst. And so this project was that. It's a guy named Jermaine Williams. I've known since MySpace days. He has been one of the most loyal people I know. And so those reworkings is him. And you would think oh, okay. it's like you would think it's him and ten other people, and it's literally him. And we outsource the sax player on Love oh. Speaks, or you know, lovely uh, L. The hashtag song is Jason Moran, Mark Kelly from the Roots, and Eric Carlin, and they're all from oh, Houston. Nice. They're all from my high Whoa. school, you know. Yeah. And then of course, Mono Neon is on Boyfriend. We're about to film a video for that, yep. and I'm so excited oh, to do that video. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't wait to see that. <laughs> I mean, either the concept is bananas, you guys. And then what is this feeling? And boyfriend was it was um, what is this feeling? I wrote I composed by myself with thinking about clocks and ticking. So that's why it's like tick tock tick, you know that. And then um, the guy who did that and boyfriend is from Poland. Oh, so, cool. yes. So I just want to what a guy said. Ride and die. Want to share your heart? See, I, I, I want to know my name when I walk by. Don't whistle at me, boy. I'm singing it back. You know I want him. Yeah, it's such a great tune. I'm glad I was on the on on that track with you. And and one of the things I was so excited, and you already had had mentioned it before. I am a huge Police fan. That was one of the first concerts that I got to see when I was a kid uh, by myself. 
Uh, that was the first concert was the police on their synchronicity tour and the fix was on the reach the beach tour. And it was one of the first concerts that I had been to by myself. And I had seats very, very similar to Rob that Rob did in <laughs> at purple rain where it was behind the stage. Uh, you didn't but, throw your gum at Stewart, did you? <laughs> no, I, didn't throw my gum I don't know if you heard that story, Tamara, but we'll, we'll tell you later. But no, anyways, sorry. this, uh, I find that Stuart Copeland is doing a tour that's going to be in five cities, Atlanta being one of them. Yes! Uh, police deranged, uh, <laughs> where he is actually, where Stuart is actually going to be doing, um, performing in front of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. And you are involved in this show, and I have to know, I, I, I got to know what what what's going on. <laughs> this is I'm so excited I can't even breathe. Right. It's just unbelievable. And I, I, I'm I'm in town that day, which is ridiculous. So. so Yeah, I um I still am pinching myself. Uh once again, this is a part of what I was saying. It's it's a life that, you know, I, I really I, I really say, God, let your will be done. And and it's not easy because you don't understand. There's days I'm just like, what? You know, I've technically not worked since May, you know, since that damn Michael Chase show. And, you know, it's, it, man. That, that is actually the title of the show, just in case anybody has not heard of that. Uh, that he had, damn Michael Chase. It's, it's, <laughs> called, it's called That Damn Michael Chase Show. And it's, oh, on, yeah. it's on HBO. It's And it's hilarious. It, it is, is hilarious. It is a, it's it's Matter of fact, my brother-in-law my brother -in -law and I have tickets to go see him uh, do stand-up uh, when he comes through Atlanta. But that show is freaking hilarious. And I can't – you're which episode are you on? I've, I've, yeah, I didn't realize you were – No, I did the music supervision, guys. I'm like, oh, that's, that's even better because now oh, I can do okay, the whole gotcha. other aspect of it. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when you meet him, because I know you are, Chris, you find your way, you, you're favored. So when you meet him, be like, I know you're a music supervisor. You know, <laughs> I have but, my in now. Yeah. And so um, Stuart Copeland, I, you guys, I, I don't even know where to start. I'm still pinching myself. I don't think it will hit me. Now, listen, I, I, I'm i going to tell you all this, and y'all can try not to tell everybody what I just said. But there's only like two people that I would go berserk over. Prince was not one. For some reason, he just felt like family. So like when I first saw him, I was just like, hey, he's like, hey, he's like, do you know Never Loved a Man? I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, let's go. One, two, three. And then from there, it was just history, right? So, but Stuart Copeland and Sting. Mm. The day I see Sting, you guys are probably going to have to I'm I'm gonna officially be a fangirl. And I, I'm telling you, I'm telling the world now, Sting. I don't know if you'll ever oh hear this gosh. before I meet you, but just to sing, every little thing she does is magic. Yeah. Every little thing to every breath you take to Roxanne, I was like, ah. yes. And just like rehearsing at Stewart's house, and just like I literally just, I I don't even think they thought I could talk. I was just so like. Like, so yeah, I, I mean, it, so, our first show is in San Diego and it's with the San Diego Symphony. And I don't, I don't know what I'm, you guys are probably gonna see the most photos and videos this whole weekend ever. I'm gonna document so much. And he likes to take photos. So I already have something in my phone now that I haven't posted yet of him. So I can't wait to like- Oh my more. God. <laughs> you gotta send something to me. Um, so are, is there any other vocalist on it or is this just you? Is there in the whole it's, show? It's three of us and we split the song. So, um, okay. and they are revered in their own right. It's Carmel Gaddis and Amy Keys. She sings like okay. Phil Collins and yeah, but it's three of us. We're out wow. front. We're out front. <laughs> We're out wow. front. Oh my God. <laughs> I am just, oh my God, I can't even. Uh, so many amazing people giving you shout outs here. Uh, I saw that LAW is in the house. LAW. Yeah, so, but, have y'all heard the song that I did with Law? But have y'all heard the song? Okay, so let me tell y'all the story about Law. So I <laughs> called him up. Law, what was it? Three weeks ago? So I forgot that I recorded the song with Law and Jelly Bean. Totally forgot. So I, matter of fact, I'm behind on posting it. So I'm sitting in the car and I'm like, we had just talked and I was like, oh, no, we just talked on Instagram. And I was like, oh, I have a song with Law. Let me Google it. You guys, I was driving in a car and had to pull over. 
What a funky song. So it's me, Jelly Bean, and Law. And I wrote it like two years ago. And I was like, I called him. I was like, Law, this song is crazy. You know. <laughs> What's but, this song called? Yeah. Law, what's the title? I forgot the title. Hold on, let me find it. Oh, uh, Law, Law will tell us. Yeah. Now uh, I'm like looking for it. I was just listening to that earlier today. I'm trying to find it too. <laughs> yeah. Shattered Pieces. Shattered Shadow. Pieces. Oh. Hey, Felicia. To it out. It's, yeah, Shattered Pieces. All right, we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can see if I can find find some of that uh, track. Um, but let's talk about the brand new album uh because oh wait a minute i found it hold on a second it's off of jelly Bean. that's on jelly beans album experienced yeah. oh yeah 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 sorry sorry it's jelly bean yeah 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 it's jelly bean. yeah so yeah i have that album actually uh, Rob, you have the album signed by Jelly Bean somewhere. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, that's right. Right too. And as, as much as many times as Jelly Bean's been on the show and as much love as I have for Jelly Bean, I want to talk about the brand new album, My Name is Ashley. That is, I mean, I am, I told, we, yes. uh, Rob and I were talking and, and, you know, Jeff was joining in the conversation too. We were talking about this album is, is insane it's so friggin good uh i am i'm i'm so happy for you that this album is out and um so tell me a little bit about the journey because you know you've had we've all been dealing with it but as artists uh independent artists dealing with covid and everything else it's just been a nightmare for musicians so tell me a little bit about the journey of putting this album together and and you know I, I don't even know even where you would start because it's got to be a lot. <laughs> yeah, this album, um, it started with, honestly, you guys, I, I wasn't even caring about putting out music. I was just so done with it. And um, Michael Nockney, the composer from Poland, searched me out, not searched me out, but he was looking for new talent to work with. And somehow he came across my Instagram page and he had never heard of me. And he just kind of reached out and I just was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, send me some music, you know, and didn't think anything of it. And his music was so breathtaking. And so I met him in the studio. I played him some music that I've been composing just on my computer. I, Cause I went through a divorce in 2018 and I just started composing. I think I have some snippets. Oh, I don't, I think I have one snippet up and it's, it reminds you of like a Harlem Nights, Harlem Renaissance kind of vibe. And I put Melvin Jones on trumpet at the end and, so I was like, dang, I, I started loving producing and creating my own music from the ground up. And so I let him hear like three songs and he took a liking to what is this feeling? And so he was like, can I really, you know, produce a version of this? And so he produces it. And, I, and of course, he finds out in my story. He was like, do you think Jelly Bean would want to be on here? And I was like, heck, yeah, it's a phone call. So <laughs> Jelly Bean added his flair and it was a totally different like about you since we met the oh, this song. Yeah. Oh. I remember when you said your name. I didn't want to leave your side. You've got a great obvious. Your presence and your charm left me speechless. You had me at hello. Great, great tune. Great, great tune. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that was the first song. And then the supporters, thanks to Tam Fan, they were like, hey, what are you going to do to celebrate 10 years of My Name is Tamar? And I was like, 10 years? It hasn't been 10 years. And, you know, that's the thing now with social media. People, you know, post the anniversary of this. And, and I, I noticed how a big that's a big deal for people to go down memory lane. So I was like, oh. So that's what sped me up to talking to Jason Moran and Mark Kelly and all of them to do Love Speaks from the first album. Kind Words is one of my favorites. I wrote that with an Israeli guitar player named Moses. And mm -hmm. um, and then Heartbeat, of course, was like the favorite to this very day of everyone. So I was like, let me call Jermaine. And he added so much flair to the song, like kind words for it to sound very, you know, beach side. But then all of a sudden it comes in feeling like this whole, like, you know, just, that, oh, yeah, it just, and, and the boom, boom part on there, 
I had, when I perform it live, I have a mashup with the Whisper song. So wait till you see my, hey, so that beat, boom, 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 uh, boom, boom, boom. So he, he made it live. And so that's what, that's the mashup that you kind of hear. Uh, and then um, Kind Words, we worked with this guitar player named John Cauldron, who is just, Houston talent is just, uh, uh, just, uh, I know you never heard the words I love you so nice and pure. Never felt but I we literally could I could sit here and just just analyze every single one of the song, all the pieces. I, I love hearing the artistry of, of crafting a song and putting the, the pieces together to to create some amazing music. And that's one of the, the things that I was telling the guys is that I've I got to call Tamar. And I, so I've got to get her on the show. We got to talk about this album. And I'm just, I, again, I can't tell you how excited I am for you that this album came out the way that, as strong as it did because, you know, it's just, it's just so amazing. It's just so good. Yeah. I'm, and my I'm goal, so happy for my goal you. on this, thank you. No, seriously, when you text me, it just, my heart dropped because I know it's going to happen organically. I have more interviews coming up eventually, but I knew. Even at my first time really listening to the project, someone hit my car and I just got it out of the shop. And um, I actually started playing the record in my car and I kind of just cried, you know, and I was like, I know this is like one of my favorite projects. And, and I just really feel deep down inside, it's gonna find some homes even, you know, months from now. And I felt like the biggest thing I could do to it is do visuals for each one of them. So like I said, we're getting ready for Boyfriend. I'm gonna do a campaign with all the supporters to see who has the best treatment and fly them in to be a part of it, of whatever that video would be. You know, we're just thinking really like outside of the box and nuanced. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do visuals to every last one of them. And you're, and there's a song that I'm putting out in October that's not on the record that I wrote with this guy named Will, Will Carpenter, you guys. It's like a Tori Kelly meets like Ariana Grande, very songwriter. So I think I'm more excited about that song as a follow-up to <laughs> <laughs> well, So yeah, my, my whole thing now is I'm just about to give content, just just content. And and I'm not looking forward to make me billions of dollars. If it does, hallelujah. But you know, I'm moving into ways where it's more longevity and paying it forward. And, and that's well, what I'm excited about. Well, some of the some of the highest the, the highest plays that we we have off of your album that people, you know, because our, our system is kind of set up where if people like a song when it's playing on the app, they can actually click like on it. And I know that all lifelong and fleek are like, uh, they're, they're just up there where people would just like love those freaking songs. Like, wow. Well, I mean, so. you guys pray this way that I get more money to put, cause I have an idea for a video for all lifelong. So that's, such a that's one of my favorite song. songs too. Uh, that's my mom's favorite song. Like she'll call and it'll be playing in the background. I'll be like, mom, you know, I have a whole, whole new album she's like yeah no i play that all the time but i always play this song and i was like she really <laughs> loves this song you know yeah it is it, it's it's one of these tracks that people are just it's just one of these songs that's just got so su such a great jam to it and people every time it gets on the radio people just sit and just click 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 it's just got this jam to it <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's just such a great it's just such a great thing. But yeah, it's um as I said, it's um you know, one of the things I can tell you is that with your blessing, I would love to put all these tracks from this brand new album in in rotation on the radio show for on the radio program on Funked Up for sure because I would do it in a second yeah. if you're okay. Yes. With it. Yes, 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 yes. And maybe we can create a, a premiere streaming of one of the videos, you know, where you guys get to see it first. Absolutely. All that would be it. That would be it. Do it. Ah. Oh, but gosh, but be ready, yeah. though, if that happens, because this whole album, everything about it screams, come see me live. Yeah, it, it does. does. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and it's so funny. Um, so I, I haven't posted this picture yet. But uh, Travis Payne is a dear mentor of mine. He's a choreographer for Michael Jackson. We just met two days ago. And um, so just stay tuned. You yeah. guys thought you'd seen Tamar, but you haven't really seen her. 
do her thing. So just oh my god, <laughs> okay. Uh, you you know I got nothing but love for you. I, I, I we we've stayed in contact even even during the, the the slow times. And I just every time I see some of the stuff you got going on, you had a cruise ship thing going on too. Is that still going on, or is that done, or what happened with that? Uh oh, here we go. Stories, there's some stories coming. Uh oh, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, it again. Got to hear it. Got to hear it. I just don't understand how people think, you know, you dangle carrots in certain artists' face and we're just going to say, okay, I'll do whatever. No, like, it, it, like things weren't adding up. The eyes weren't dot. It's just, I, I put a post finally. I was like, I never do this, but I was like, dear male promoters. So that's towards them. So I'm going to be honest. Like, it just got to a point where we've been negotiating and talking for a year for it to come down to like last minute, like, well, you know, and it was just like, no, I'm not going anywhere by myself. You know, I'm not going international and traveling by myself. You know, a lot of women, some artists do to each his own. I can't travel by myself just because of security right. things. And, you know, I just would prefer right. to not. And I've been doing it my whole career. And so I got to a point where I was like, when I did the residency in Australia, I was like, I'm not going unless someone I know is with me. And that's how my brother was able to go with me. And I'm I'm standing on certain things from here on out, and like certain things they they don't they didn't some people don't want to put you insured, and I'm like, unless you're hiring my company and my company takes out the insurance, then and that's what they were doing. They were t hiring the company, but it wasn't enough money for me to pay for my own insurance. And now that I'm getting into live production and have put on two shows in Houston this year, like that's insurance for those musicians. It costs, and the right. more musicians you have the more that it goes on that liability insurance. And, and the, the venue has to see my insurance before my client performs, you know what I mean? Yep. My talent performs. So it was just like, mm, I know this business. You can't get me without certain things. I'm not gonna fall off nobody's ship and you calling my parents saying, well, oh no, no, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> nope, <laughs> not here. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, you know, Man. that's me. You guys have heard a lot from me that I don't really say, but <laughs> that's it right there. <laughs> All right, that's that. Yeah, so that means you got to take it off your website because that's on the front page of your website. So. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I do. To I took it off. off of certain platforms, but I do need to take it off of there. That's right. Yeah, I was just like, oh, it's going to be on the ship. I need to talk. Um, so I, I want to make sure that everybody knows that you know, I, I'm okay with you guys listening on um, listening to her album on Spotify because it's out and it's unbelievable and it's fantastic. But if you're on on here with us, please, I want you guys to head to uh, Amazon and actually buy it. Buy it. A lot more money that way. Own it. Point zero zero one cent per listen or whatever it is. Ridiculous. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so please make sure that you go and you actually purchase the album. Um, but before you go, and I, I really want to do this too, you also, you guys also need to head to her website, um, AshleyTamar.com, which I think automatically forwards to TamarDavis.com or is the reverse of that. But go to the website and actually purchase merchandise because 100% of the proceeds actually go to the Siren Arts Academy, if that's still uh, legit. So tell me. Yeah, girl, that'll I, always be. Insane busy. So, so tell so tell busy. people a little bit about um, the Siren Arts Academy before you go, because I want, obviously, people to see something about this. Yeah, so, well, hold on. Let me go get the book and the workbook. It'll make more sense that way. Hold okay. on. That's even hold better. on. That sounds even better. Yeah. So, yeah, so, like you said, it's, I'm leaving too. It's like you said, it's important, guys. You buy this music, you know, just putting your thumbs up and liking is great, but uh, it's all about support. Yeah, it's all about so, support. <laughs> and don't, yeah, don't get me started on those likes things. Oh, my God. So, Siren Arts, if you want to support our troops, like this. Uh, that doesn't work. Like yeah, it's, it, I mean, those algorithms. I did a whole proposal for South by Southwest talking about the algorithms. It's just like it really is the death of the artist. I, I hate to say it, but the, it's just it is what it is. I could talk about that for days. But the Siren Arts Academy means everything to me. Um, uh, on, if you go to my Instagram, it has my Linktree account where you can donate and sponsor a student or a school. Um, so this year I'm officially going after that and filming a pilot um, in Atlanta. 
And so I created a book and a workbook. This one is 100 Things to Know as an Independent Artist. And this is the workbook. The workbook, you can literally write in it. It has like templates. It has a budget for independent artists because they don't think about a lot of things that they have to pay for. It has a whole workbook component like to test your skills about the business. It has definitions. It has anything that I wish I, I could have had <laughs> in high school. <laughs> Yeah. And then this book is very simple. It just counts down from 100, number 41, number 42, number, you know what I mean? It counts down and it just has like definitions or I drop nuggets of like someone asked me recently, how did I get my moving graphics on Instagram and where I post with the music playing and the album spinning? And um, I was like, well, if you get my workbook, you would see, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I kind of drop nuggets in here basically for the price of the book. So instead of you get, trying to pay the money for the consultation and stuff through the company, because I'm really focusing on the company really taking wings with all of the consultation and stuff, this book has it. And so right now, if you, you know, when you sponsor a book or whatever, it goes to a student. Like I literally ship them to students at schools. And oh. the main reason I wrote it is because arts have been taken out of schools. And then the other part about it was I was so frustrated hearing kids always want to be a singer or an actor or singers who didn't even consider acting, or they don't even know about the other industries like you know music supervision or coordinator or this or that, or even how to approach people that they admire to get into the business. And so it's all about non-traditional careers. I do a whole intense creative masterclass. They say don't, they're not using the word master anymore, more, which makes sense because all the controversy, but um, it really does help because a lot of these schools Someone just approached me recently and was like, they can only afford for 10 students, you know, but after I'm dropping nuggets, like I just did recently for an organization, they were like, we've never heard of that website. And I was like, well, that's the biggest website you should know, you know? And they had had people before me who had done master classes and the, the director of the, this major company was like, we've never had anyone tell us this information. So I know what I bring is valuable and it's, it's lifelong longing and, these books are like kind of a way to get into the high schools and hopefully I can get into more schools by this, the sponsorship and donations, you know, that come in for the books to get to the students. Yeah. And if you want more information, Jeff has put the URL out there for TamarDavis.com slash Siren. That's S-Y-R-E-N dash arts dash academy i have also put up the link on youtube and facebook and mixcloud uh, directly to that link if you want to buy that book on amazon which i will be doing before i go to bed tonight because uh i i, I just want to do whatever i possibly can to support you because you're such an amazing musician i'm just you know i i think jeff and i were talking about this before it's just it just blows us away that that um um you're not a household name at this point because it's yeah. just the stuff that you're putting out, the music that you're putting out is just yeah. unfriggin' real. And uh, I'm, I, I feel like my time is here though. I really do. I really feel it like is. It's here. The word it of mouth is like gonna, it. you know, so yeah. I'm just in line. I'm patient. And I know when it happens, you guys are probably just be like getting me tissue, you know, just pick up the tears for weeks, but you know, <laughs> well. But when you're in Atlanta doing that pilot, please send me a text. Uh, let's go grab dinner or something. I will... I'm going to need your help. I'm telling you that now. So I'm already, I'm going to yeah. pull in all the stage designers. That, you know, I have a budget, but I, I already know I'm going to need. You know, Ooh, talk talk need to me. To yeah. I, okay. I'm actually uh, working on making some uh, changes for myself too. And that will be part of it for sure. Uh, is uh, uh, we'll talk offline. I just I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> but, no, you're fine. Uh, yeah, we're gonna be making choices. Tamar, I know you got to get some rest because I know you got a you got a, a a plane to catch and everything, and some books to read and memorize and everything. Please, everybody, <laughs> go buy this album on Amazon. It's uh, it's, it's so fantastic. Good. And yeah. you know what? It reminds me of some of those albums that came out in the '80s. That like you'd listen to and like the whole album would be good and like it would be different, but there'd be some funky music, there'd be some laid back music. I, I I was listening to a day. I was thinking to myself, Chris, if you'd and I have heard this album back then, we'd have had this on play all the time. Yeah, thank it's, you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it would have been. I on. really do, you guys. I really. It is a prayer of mine. I, I just feel you guys saying that makes me a little emotional. I'm an emotional being anyway, but I really feel like something is gonna happen from the album, it got picked up on a major Spotify playlist, like Boyfriend, and so that's why I was just like, yeah. if I have to use everything I have, I'm gonna make sure these visuals are very 
definitive and you know and 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 I really have always felt like my my sound should never be compromised and this is the first project where I was like I don't want it to be commercial or this I just want it to be like songs that I have truly put my hand and 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 blood sweat and tears into and there's more songs you guys these are just the beginning but the, these are you know and a special shout out to my entire team and crew who worked every musician from Mononia to jelly bean every last one of them said yes and they did not take long to give me the files and that's another thing you guys when you see these musicians who really support each other like please give them a pat on the back because it's a lot for artists to call people that we want and it's 10 million dollars they take forever to send you stuff and every last one of these guys turn the songs around literally within days so special hugs to them yeah that's always amazing that, that's nice. and and the and the results are there so many so much positive energy all throughout the all throughout the chat room here and it's completely yeah. thank you Andrea. It's it's yeah. uh, it's completely warranted. There's so so many people out here that just uh, got nothing um, nothing but love and uh, man, it's so oh I forgot to say it. Um, I, I I went down to hey, Tucson. Camino. Sorry, I went I'm down just to saying Tucson. Thank you. No, that's cool. Uh, I went down to Tucson to move my daughter into college, and we were listening to your album while I was like getting her room set up and everything. And she looked at me and she said, "This is pretty good. Who is this?" I was like, "It's Tamar. <laughs> I'll be talking to her next week." <laughs> She tell was like, her, tell her to cool. bump it in the in the dorm and and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> if, if that age group likes it, then I'm like in the money. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Because <laughs> that age group is putting out music, like they're putting out music every other week. I'm like, who's putting these bills? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're definitely a contender for that because you 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 pulled it out with this one. I mean, you you got that feeling, that old, that new, but that you. Yeah, you know Ooh, what I mean. Nice. It's not. It doesn't sound like oh, she's trying to be this or she's trying to be mm -hmm. that. This sounds like you. Every every song that I listen to, all I could think of is man. If I was in the room, you know, I just want to be in the room. You know, like this song is on. I'm like, oh, that's cozy. Like I, words are coming to me like cozy. What the heck, cozy? <laughs> well, How just come get up with ready. That? I, I just get ready. I don't want to say ahead of time what the other songs and the styles are going to be but and then i have a huge announcement for next year playing an iconic role um, in houston in um theater so cool. you guys That's get great. your tickets get ready to come to houston because i'm telling you i'm definitely throwing at least one big shebang and something you know so <laughs> let us know may link yeah. said she's already ordered your book and album uh there was a message that was up here before from stacy said your david brewer interview made me cry um and uh, um, thank you stacy it was hard for me to hear but you know <laughs> yeah so it's your queen of your craft your, all, all this stuff is just uh yeah it's uh yeah all these people just nothing but love here but dear thank you so so much for coming on the show i greatly thank appreciate you. it it's always great yeah. to touch base with you and uh again i'm, I'm serious give me shoot me a text when you get to atlanta we'll, we'll we'll do something yeah i'll definitely help you out whatever you need yeah, I'll hit you up ahead of time. I'm still trying to plan out what schools and which school I'm going to go to and stuff. But yeah, I will. I promise. That's going to be fantastic. It's going to be off. And ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Tamar. Ashley. <laughs> 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 and it's gone. She's <laughs> <hurting me>. Smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tamar. Smoothie. <laughs> 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 all right all right <laughs> sorry nick yes. <laughs> he was like the horn's gotta go no <laughs> sometimes uh, it's appropriate yeah it's, it's, it, it's it, seriously it's one of my favorites especially when it comes out of nowhere like i don't go to clubs but i think the last time i went to like an event and something happened they were like burr, burr, burr. i was like burr, 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 burr. <laughs> It's an iconic sound. All right, get some oh, rest there. Thank you so so much for coming on. We'll thank see you guys later. for having me. Thanks to everyone thank who joined you. in. Thank, thank you so you. much. We love you. We love you. I love you guys. Love you, Tamar. Bye. Bye. Love you. All right. Oh my gosh, that was Woo! incredible. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god, she's amazing. And she's uh, I, oh, I, she's just so real. I that's I, I love that about her. She's just yeah. she's, she is who she is, and it comes yeah. through in her music. And her voice, yeah. 
Yep. And as I said, make sure you go and get the album that is My Name is Ashley. I put that uh, I put that link up there, the Amazon link. You can scroll up and get that Amazon link. Get it. You can check it out on Spotify. And it, it, you need to listen. I love this to cover. It. This cover is just, when I first saw it, I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's very Janelle Monet. That seemed like something that she would do. It's got that, got that is, kind of yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's how like like something she would do. But I'm yeah. telling you, this song is, is so good. Like the from from the opening song, the opening, it just punch you oh. in the face. Listen to me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just strong. Yeah. Yeah. Strong. Totally. Yeah.